three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Mission Control for a, another Fidget Focus video. In this video, we're going to talk about options for cues. Instead of options for a queue, we can press the hard options key or the options soft key for the top level of the menu. Then press the select button of the playback to be edited. The options window will open allowing you to set a wide range of options for how the playback will work, including times. You can also set the options using the soft keys. The options are split into different categories using the tabs down the left hand side. Click the I button for a help window on each setting. These options are covered in this video are for normal cues. For cue lists and chases, the options are different and are described in the video, cue list video and the chases video, which will be linked below. So let's take a look at this. Here I got version 14 of Titan on the Titan Go interface. I have two ways to start this. I can either hit the options key here or the options soft key. Once I click it, if I want to select multiple playbacks, I can. I can just drag select across them, set the options for all three at once, or just one at a time. Under the playbacks tab, we'll have blind. This sets the individual playback to the blind mode. The playback will only output to the visualizer and not to the stage. This can be useful if you need to program and test a cue during a live show. Crossfade HTTP, if on, makes the HTTP channels dimmer in Titan. In this queue, override other HTTP channels, obeying the priority settings. So if you needed a playback that would bring down uh, levels of other playbacks. You can set the priority uh, to higher and use the Crossfade HTTP. If you have the priority, this allows you to configure how playbacks will behave if you turn on two playbacks controlling the same fixture. Uh, one thing you need to know is you need to refire for this to take effect. Let's take a look over here at that. So here, if we were to click on our priority, we can see we get low, normal, high, programmer and very high. Very high would even override what's going on in the programmer so that the fixture uh, would take those values that are in the playback and you couldn't even change it with other playbacks or with the programmer if you were set to very high. Run on startup. This sets the playback to run when the console powers up or the show file is loaded. This can be disabled when the auto run startup playbacks option in user settings. Uh, it is turned on by default so if you had a playback that you wanted to run uh, automatically every time you loaded the show file such as maybe turn on the uh, basic stage wash. Uh, you can turn this option on there. Continuing on to the handle tab, a handle paging. This allows you to lock a playback onto a handle so it always appears on that handle no matter what page is selected. This is useful if you have some general playbacks you want in every page. We'll have to copy the playback onto each page. Unlock the playback will change with the pages as normal. Transparent lock. The playback will appear on all pages when a handle is unprogrammed. Lock. This playback will appear on all pages Probably guys program this handle on other pages will not be accessible. So let's take a look at that. So here I'm going to set it to this playback to locked. And then we'll go ahead and close our playback options. And we can see that if I change the page, that stays on there no matter what page I go to. If I was to set a transparent lock, we then see when I change the page two, it stays there. But since I have something recorded on page three, it, it uh, switches to that. When I go back to page four, five, and so on, it stays locked on there since so those faders are uh, empty on those pages. Key profile sets the key profile individually for this playback. Global sets the key profile back to global settings for playbacks. Take a look at that real quick here. Here, I can just click on key profile and I can either add new or choose for one that is already existing. Under the times tab, I have delay in, this sets the delay in time for all fixtures, we call this the global delay. Fade in sets the fade in time for all fixtures, we call this the global fade in. Fade out sets the fade out time of all fixtures, by default this is disabled, and you have manual control of the HTTP fade out on the fader. LTP channels remain as set in the queue. Fixture overlap sets the overlap percentage of the queue. Flash fade in and flash fade out, all these we use to have different flash in, in and flash out fade times if we use the timed flash key profile speed. The default speed for this playback in BPM, this can be overridden by rate or BPM master. This is where you would set uh, the BPM for a, a, an effect you had in the playback. Under the fader tab, we have fader mode sets how a playback behaves. Mode zero obeys the fade in time, but will always be a manually controlled fade out determined by the speed at which the fader is brought down. Mode 1 obeys both the fade in and fade out times. Mode 2, all channels are controlled by the fader, including LTP channels, instant LTP channels, such as color wheel, still snap, 
in this mode, all channels fade in and out on the fader, returning to where they started when the fader is fired. Mode 3 crossfades all other playbacks out in the time this playback fades in. Mode 3 is the only mode which will force other HTTP channels off. So let's take a look at that. So here I've got my fader mode set to mode 0 only. And at times I've got a fade in of 3 seconds. So that if I close this, and now when I bring this fader up, we can see that it fades in over three seconds, but fades out is faster to bring the, bring the fader down. If I set a fade out time of three seconds again, and I go to my fader and I change it to, it automatically changes to mode one, but I can change it to mode one. See that now, no matter how fast I bring the fader up, it fades in in three seconds. And no matter how fast I bring it down, it fades out in three seconds. If we were to set it to mode 2, all LTP items would fade to the fader, such as color. So if we go ahead and close that, and then we bring up our fader here, so we have something else going on. And then we bring this fader up, we can see that our movement shape fades in to the fader, and as I fade back out, see the fixtures return to what they were doing before. controlled by the level of my fader. If we set to mode 3, we can see that our other playbacks will fade out as this playback is faded in. So if we go ahead and close that, and now we bring this up, we can see that our other two playbacks fade all the way out, and only this one is active. As I start to fade it back down, we can see that these two playbacks return to being active again. Last we have in the fader is curve. Allows you to set a different curve shape for this playback. The curves are listed on the soft keys. So we see here, curve is by default linear. However, we can choose different ones here. If you want to see what each curve looks like, we can check that in the manual. See here, I've got the manual open, and we can see what the different curves look like. So we can inspect multiplier, a multiplier for the speed of effects on this playback applied in addition to PPM masters and other modifiers. Shape and effect speed sets whether the fader position affects the speed of shapes in this playback. Shape behavior controls the behavior of keyframe shapes in this playback. Global uses the global setting from user settings. Overlay shape continues to run over changes to attributes. LTP if attributes are changed, the shape will stop running on those attributes. Shape size sets whether the fader position affects the size of shapes in this playback. Fixed has no effect. Fader the size of all types of shape are set by the fader position. HTTP fader, only dimmer shapes are controlled by the fader position. Size source allows you to allocate a size master to this playback. Speed source all allows you to allocate a rate and BPM master to this playback. So let's take a look at that. So here I've got a BPM master as well as a couple other playbacks added in. If we go ahead and take a look at our options. Here we set our, our effect speed multiplier uh, to be what we wanted it to be. Our shape and effect speed fixed or on fader. If we turn it to on fader and then exit, we see that if we bring this up here now, the slower we bring it up, the slower the playback moves, the higher we bring it up, the faster it moves. Shape and effect behavior, again, controls how a keyframe shape responds to other attributes being changed. So here I've got a standard flyout. If we let that run, we see that we've got our flyout going. And with it set to global, it would follow the setting in user settings. If we set it to overlay, we see here if I try to use this playback I have that has just a position in, if I fire it, the shape continues to run. However, if we set the LTP option and then we refire our fader, now when we fire this flyback, we see that the Movement stops, but the dimmer part of the shape continues to run. If we wanted to have our shape size on a fader, we can set it to be on the fader so that when we brought this play back in, we can see that the size of it is controlled by our fader as we slowly bring it up. Our size gets larger, and if we slowly bring it down, our size of our shape gets smaller. We can set our size source, so if we wanted to use a size master, we can simply change it here. And same thing with speed source. We wanted to set it to listen to BPM master or rate master. We could choose from our list here.
Under the Release tab, we have Release Masks. They should specify which tributes will be released to the state they were in in a previously fired playback. When this playback is killed, you lower the fader to zero. You can also use the Attribute Bank buttons to set the mask. The mask can be set to global or local. Local means you can make individual mask settings for this playback. Global uses the global release mask, which is set in the release menu. Press release. Release time sets the release time. Sets the release fade time for this playback. Enter play time to return to the global. Global release is set on user settings. So let's take a look at that. Here, I've got a playback up, as we can see. Now, if I was to fire this playback here, we can see that it brings in a different color, gobo, and position along with our movement. If I was to drop this fader, we see that our movement stops, but our fixtures remain in the same gobo color and position. If I wanted it so that when I released it, it automatically went back. I can simply go into my options again, set my release mask instead of, and change it from global to local. I'm going to have it include position, color, and gobo. And we'll set a release time of zero, so it happens instantly. So now, when I fire this fader, See that our movement comes in, it does what it does, and then when I bring it back down and I kill it, it goes back to doing the proper color and gobo that it was doing from this playback before. So that has been the option menu for cues in version 14 of Titan. I hope you learned something. Please subscribe and join us next time. Thanks. Bye. Wheel stop. Roger, wheel stop, Discovery. Welcome back. A great ending to the new beginning.